Hello everyone, and welcome back. Last time, we built Engine Simulator's fluid simulation, called Tubular, and used it to simulate a trumpet. Today we're going to take our first steps into applying this fluid simulation to combustion engine sounds. Before we get started, I'd like to thank BeamNG, Reyna, Meister, Goldwolf, and Snow for supporting me at the Master Mechanic level on Patreon, and Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I know starting out with a new skill seems overwhelming, but you have to start somewhere, and starting small is the best way to do it. When I first learned 3D modeling, I spent an entire month doing small, low-pressure, single-day projects. Eventually, I graduated to more elaborate models, and now I'm at least an average modeler, good enough for my purposes. Skillshare makes this step-by-step -step learning process easier with structured courses led by experts in their field with everything ranging from music and photography to programming and business. One thing I've always wanted to improve about my videos is my voiceovers, so I've been taking the Foundations of VoiceOver class by Christopher Tester, and it's actually helped me quite a lot. I'm going to also check out their curated class, Start a Business and Refine Your Branding to get ready for the Engine Simulator release. I really cannot recommend investing in yourself enough, and Skillshare is a great way to do it. To check it out, click on my link in the description. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. First, we need to set up a test bench where we can start prototyping. We don't know anything about potential problems that might arise with the new simulation, so it doesn't make sense to build anything too elaborate in the engine simulator user interface right now. To make this easier, I created a prototyping library within my game engine, which I used in my last video to create Trumpet Simulator and the other smaller demonstrations. It allows me to be up and running with a game window and Vulkan context in just a few lines of code. All we need to do now is build up the basic infrastructure of the application and add my real-time audio processing components, which I refined in Steam Engine Simulator. Once that was done, I had this black screen which plays some white noise just to verify that the audio processing pipeline is working correctly. Now that the real-time audio system was set up, I started laying out and designing the simulation. I'm using Blender to lay out the tubing needed to simulate a very basic engine and some static art that will make the visualization a bit easier to understand. Once we export these assets to my game engine's asset file format, we can import and display them. The only thing missing right now is the visualizations for the individual tubes. Now, we already built these visualizations last time, so it's just a matter of reusing that code and setting the visualization to follow the paths that we defined earlier in Blender. As a simple proof of concept, I set up this demo where the cylinder is assumed to be at a constant high temperature and pressure. There is no piston, no combustion, and no other mechanical components to the engine other than the exhaust valve, which opens and closes very quickly. This is obviously a terrible approximation of an engine, but it's easy to test audio ideas with. All right, that's a bit underwhelming. What happened here is a classic spiral to infinity, uh, which can sometimes happen with numerical algorithms. If we watch the simulation back at 1 1,000th speed, we can start to understand what happened. Something went horribly wrong around here, creating either an infinity or not a number value, and this propagated quickly across the domain, completely destroying our fluid simulation. This can be the result of mistakes in the simulation itself, using an unstable algorithm, or using simulation segments that are too small. But I don't think any of these explanations are relevant in this case. Under extreme conditions, any fluid simulation can become unstable, and being restricted to 32-bit floating point values doesn't help the situation. I am doing some research into resolving issues like this in a rigorous way, but for now, I implemented some hacks that prevent instability through brute force checks and minor adjustments. It probably wouldn't fly in an academic simulation, but this is just a tube game for vroom vroom sounds, so I think it's a little more acceptable.
With those hacks completed, the simulation ran, uh, but the results were not very impressive. On the surface, this seems like a bit of a disaster. I spent months and quite literally hundreds of hours on the simulation, and it seems like it was all for nothing. However, if there's one thing that I learned from the original Engine Simulator project, audio generation is challenging, and things rarely work as expected, so it's too early to give up. Probably the most satisfying part about writing simulations is seeing the result get closer to reality as you add more detail to your model. The first efficiency that we can address is the lack of friction effects in the tube. This isn't modeled right now because it's part of the same system that handles variable cross-sectional area and that isn't done yet. We can hack it in pretty easily though and dampen the velocity slightly to avoid the weird resonances that we're hearing. That did fix the exaggerated tube sounds, but now the sound has been deadened quite a bit. To solve this, let's take a closer look at the pipe outlet. It's actually not trivial to determine how exhaust gas flow in the exhaust system gets converted into the sound that we hear. In my last video, I directly sampled the pressure in the tube slightly inside the end of the trumpet and played that back as audio. I base this on some work done by Johann Liljenkrantz on his website, specifically this article about end correction at a flue pipe mouth. End correction describes a small column of air outside of a pipe that sort of acts like it's inside of the pipe. This is significant for instrument design because it makes the resonant frequency of the pipe lower than mathematically predicted. In the article, he also states, the acoustic pressure at this place, in principle, is minimum. Still, it is far from zero. It is the sound pressure that you can hear. I sort of took this statement and ran with it, making the assumption that the last few control volumes in the simulation represent the end correction region, and the pressure in this region accurately represents the sound signal that is emitted from the instrument. This, however, may have been a bit of an oversimplification, and credit to Liljenkrantz, he never explicitly stated that it was a valid assumption. It was more of an offhand observation. This other paper may be able to guide us in the right direction. Noise characteristics and exhaust process gas dynamics of a small two-stroke engine. This was written in 1978 by Adrian David Jones. And this was actually a major inspiration for the original engine simulator project even though at the time I didn't really understand anything in the paper. Uh, this is a 270 page document that is dedicated to the study of small engine sounds and is surprisingly detailed. Jones gives the following calculation of sound pressure, which uses the derivative of the gas velocity, the gas density, and the area at the outlet. These are all things that we can easily pull from the fluid simulation, so it's easy enough to implement. This adjustment brought back a lot of the tube resonance that we lost when we dampened the velocity initially. Jones clearly states that this is a quite adequate first approximation, and I'm okay with a quite adequate first approximation for now. Next, we can turn our attention to another obvious flaw, which is the constant cylinder temperature and pressure, which persists even after the exhaust valve is opened. Modeling the combustion chamber isn't that simple, so we're not going to be covering it in this video. Instead, we're just going to use a simple approximation, having the cylinder pressure fall off exponentially after the valve is opened. It's not at all physically correct, but it does smooth out the sound a little bit. In a real engine, the exhaust valve lift profile with respect to time will have a dramatic impact on the sound of the engine, but I'm just using a basic triangle function for now. The detailed cylinder model with a real valve lift profile should improve the sound quality quite a bit. 
The final step is to add a bit of randomness to the simulation. So for example, just randomly varying the RPM and the cylinder pressure. And our extremely simple engine proof of concept is now done. We can also add a small amount of convolution reverb to model the environment around the engine since people don't usually run engines inside of audio studios. Obviously, this doesn't sound great, and probably the worst part is the idle, which is the hardest to model in software, because mechanical noise and turbulence effects tend to dominate at this RPM range, and they happen to be very difficult to simulate. I do have some theories about how to improve this, but it will take a bit more research. I suspect that the correct answer to this problem lies in computational aeroacoustics, or CAA, which covers the analysis of sounds generated by turbulent flows. As an initial approximation, we can apply some pink noise to the signal depending on the velocity and Reynolds number at the end of the tube, where the Reynolds number is a dimensionless value that predicts whether the fluid flow is turbulent or laminar. Other than these issues at low speeds, we can already see major improvements compared to the original engine simulator. The audio is a lot clearer and sharper at higher RPM without that annoying buzzing sound that I was never able to fully remove. Once we start adding details to this model and simulating the combustion chamber more completely, we'll address some of the other deficiencies. It's also good to see that some of the more complex gas interactions are now being accounted for at higher RPM. At these speeds, the pulses in the exhaust system start interacting with each other in complex ways, and this will become even more evident once we have exhaust systems with collectors and junctions. We can also change the visualization to show vacuum, which is a fancy way of saying pressure below one atmosphere. This allows us to clearly visualize the reflected wave from the outlet, and in this demonstration, it seems to arrive a bit too early to our exhaust valve, which tells us that this header length may not be tuned to this particular engine speed. With these tools, players will be able to adjust their exhaust system geometries to design an engine that has a desired power band, which is pretty cool. I also accidentally discovered that you can use this program to generate sirens, uh, which is good because I actually get a lot of emails from siren enthusiasts asking me if I can include them in the game. I know this is kind of a smaller video than usual, but I just wanted to let everyone know that I am still working on Engine Simulator, and there is method to my madness here. I know it seems like I jump around to random projects, but they are all part of the same project, and I'm mainly doing it to keep the content interesting for you guys. Next time, we'll start refining this starting point and moving closer towards the first alpha release, which will allow players to create and connect these components using the 3D interface. Thanks to all my patrons and Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.